Hey everyone, welcome. So before we jump into this tutorial, I quickly wanted to say, I hope you all are staying safe. Uh, take good care of yourself and your family members and uh, please help out others around you and uh, definitely don't do anything stupid. So after having said that, let's jump into this tutorial. So if you remember in our previous tutorial, we spoke about how to set up in-app purchases on the Google Play console. If you haven't checked that tutorial out, I will leave a link to that tutorial over here to check it out. Today's tutorial is going to be a bit more technical and we are going to talk about multi-conditional booleans. But uh, before I tell you what I mean by a multi-conditional boolean and how to implement that, let's take a look at a scenario where you would use something like that. So in my current game that I'm working on, there are a few conditions under which my player is protected from getting any damage. For example, if they have equipped a bonus like a shield or if they have uh, died and revived after watching an ad, there are a few seconds where they are protected under revive. So the easiest way to implement something like this is to have a player protected boolean in your player controller class. And whenever one of these effects is active, you set that to true. And when the effect completes, you set it back to false. This will work fine if all these effects are mutually exclusive. But what happens if two of them are active at the same time? Let's take a look at a project I have in Unity. So in here, you can see I have a simple screen and then I have a timer that displays the lifetime of my shield and then uh, there is a timer for revive then i have a text that uh, displays the current status of player protected and then i have two buttons to activate these effects so my shield lifetime is uh, 10 seconds and my revive lifetime is 5 seconds so let's just run this so as you can see the player protected starts off as being false now if i click on revive the revive effect is started so the player product is true. Once it completes, it sets back to false. The same with shield. Once the shield is active, it will set the player product to true. And uh, once it completes, excuse me, it will set it back to false. So this works fine. But what if I start revive and then the player equips the shield? So now once the revive completes, it's going to set the boolean to false and we have a problem. The shield is still active, but my player protected boolean is false. And uh, this can lead to a lot of problems uh, and edge cases. So what's the best way to fix this? A easier solution might be to have uh, two separate booleans for shield and revive, but uh, that solution is not scalable and what I mean by that is say if there are 10 more conditions under which your player is now protected as the project keeps on growing you add more bonuses and more effects under which your player is protected and if you go with the approach of having different booleans for each of these effects you will have to keep on creating 10, 12, 15 booleans and to manage those many booleans it's going to be really messy and it can lead to a lot of bugs in your code. And this is just one scenario. You might have other places in your game where you have similar uh, booleans which can be true under multiple conditions. So we want a smarter solution to this. And uh, that is where the multi-conditional boolean comes uh, to our rescue. So the idea behind a multi-conditional boolean is very similar to having different booleans for each of these effects, but without explicitly defining those booleans. So what we are going to do is in our multi-conditional boolean class, we will have an integer value and uh, the multi-conditional boolean is false if this integer value is zero and it is true otherwise. And uh, an integer is just made up of bits, right? So each bit can be zero or one. So if we can find a way to reserve each of these bits for each of our effects, it will be similar to having different booleans. So if uh, the first bit is reserved for shield and whenever the shield is active, we will just set the first bit to one. And when the shield completes, we reset it back to zero. Similarly, we reserve the second bit for revive. Whenever revive is active, we set the second bit to one. 
and once revive completes we set it back to zero and our boolean overall is false only if the value is zero so when everything is zero when all bits are zero the multi conditional boolean is false otherwise it's true so the idea is very similar to having uh, different booleans for each of these effects so let's see how we can go about implementing this so in our project let's create a new script called multi conditional boolean let's open that up all right so first thing is we need a way to uh, say which bit uh, belongs to which effect so the way we are going to do this is uh, by creating an enum which i already have here called player protected and uh, the enum has two values shield and revive the shield is integer 0 and revive is integer 1 so enums in c sharp have an underlying data type and by default those are integers so we are going to assign 0 to shield and 1 to revive and in our multi conditional boolean we are going to create this as a template class where our t is of type enum let's say using system and then t is an enum so in this way uh, this is a generic class and uh, if you have other places in your project where you need to create multi conditional booleans create a separate enum with all those conditions and then you can use this over there as well i hope that made sense so the first thing we are going to do is uh, declare an integer value inside this boolean and then in the constructor we are going to set this value to 0 which means the multi conditional boolean is initialized to false so now we need a way to uh, set those individual bits i spoke about earlier so let's create a function called set and then this function will take in an enum value so we will call this function for example over here we will call it with either shield or revive and we need to first find uh, the appropriate bit for those and we need to set them so the way we are going to do this is uh, convert the enum value to an integer so in c sharp by default enum values have integers as their underlying data structure but since this is a generic class we can't just assume that so let's create a try block over here and let's get the enum int value by using the convert class so we are going to say convert dot change type of my enum value and we want to change it to type of int and uh, this returns an object so now we can safely cast that to an int so if we call this set function with the uh, shield this is going to be zero because its underlying integer value is zero and that represents the bit so the zero with bit which is the first bit is uh, reserved for shield <clears throat> so all we want to do is set the first bit to 1 and uh, we are going to do that by using a binary or operation <clears throat> excuse me because anything or with 1 is 1 like 0 or 1 is 1 1 or 1 is 1 so to set a bit we just have to or that bit with the value 1 so the way we are going to do this is value is equal to value or and then we will have 1 and we are going to left shift that by the enum int value so say the enum int value is 0 when we left shift 1 by 0 bits the first bit will be 1 and then when we or it by the value the first bit like the left the rightmost bit of uh, value will be set to 1 and uh, since we are using try let's end that with a catch block and we're going to catch an invalid cast exception 
and we'll just do a log saying debug.log can't convert enum to int. So the set function is going to do the job of setting the bit to one. Similarly, we need a reset function that resets the bit to zero. So let's do that. Even this function will take, take in an enum value. Let's do the conversion again. Okay, now to reset a bit, we need to and it with zero because any value and zero will be zero. So we are guaranteed to reset it. But we don't want to change the other bits. We only want to change the bit reserved for this current enum value. So the way we are going to do this is value is equal to value. We'll do a binary and and we'll have one. We will left shift that by enum int value. So this won't work yet. <clears throat> so what we are doing is we, we have one and we will left shift that by the enum int value. So now the bit where we want, which we want to reset, we have a one over there, but we want a zero because we want to add it with zero. So the way we can achieve that is by complementing this which will just end up flipping the bits. So it will change the ones to zeros and zeros to one. So we will only have zero at the bit we want to reset and we will have one everywhere else. So when we do a and we don't change the other bits and we only end up resetting the bit reserved for this enum. I really hope that makes sense. I'm trying to explain it as much as I can. And let's catch an invalid exception again. And uh, let's log this. Okay, so now we have a set function which sets our bit to one. And then we have a reset function which resets it, resets it back to zero. And now we'll have a function which we can call to check the Boolean value of this multi-conditional Boolean. And we all, all we have to do is return value not equal to zero. So if the value is zero, this multi-conditional Boolean is false, but if it is anything other than zero, the value is true. And if you want a generic function to just clear the multi-conditional Boolean, you can do that easily by setting the value to zero. All right, so this is our multi-conditional Boolean class. It is a generic class uh, where the T is of type enum. And then we have a set reset functions, which will set and reset the individual bits reserved for a particular enum. And then we have a is true function, which will uh, return if the multi-conditional Boolean is true. And we have a clear function to just clear out the value. So let's see how we can use this in place of this player protected Boolean. So let's get rid of this and uh, create a multi-conditional boolean and our enum is going to be of type player protected okay now we have a property here which says is player protected so instead of just re returning player protected we need to return player protected is true now when we click on the shield button instead of just setting the boolean what we are going to do is <clears throat> say player protected dot set and then pass in the shield enum so it's going to set the bit for the shield enum and when the shield timer runs out we are going to say player protected dot reset player protected dot shield so we will reset the bit for shield similarly when we click on the revive button we'll say player protected dot set set the revive bit and once the revive timer runs out we will reset the revive bit 
So in this way, now we have a granular control on each of these effects being active independently. So when the shield is active, we only set its bit. And uh, when the timer runs out, we are going to just clear that bit and we won't affect any other bits. So now if we go back to our project, uh, I do have an error. Oh, okay. We don't need, uh, over on awake, instead of setting that to false, we need to actually create the multi-conditional Boolean. So let's create that over here. And uh, that should get rid of our error. Okay. So now when I play this, our player protected uh, starts as, as false. Now when I click on revive, it's going to set its own bit, but the value is true. And once the revive completes, it's false. Now when I click on revive and then I click on shield, when the revive completes, it's just going to reset its value, its bit. And hence you see the player protected is still true. And once shield completes, it sets its bit to zero. And now the overall multi-conditional Boolean is false. So say if you have any other conditions under which the player is protected, you can just keep on adding different enums to uh, this list. And all you have to do is whenever that effect is active, just set that effect's particular bit. And once the effect completes, just reset it its own bit. And in that way, it doesn't affect the other bits. And uh, you won't have the edge cases that we previously faced by having just a single Boolean. And this is a much better and cleaner way uh, to implement uh, this instead of just having 10, 15 Booleans. So I hope uh, you found this tutorial to be useful and uh, you can find a use case for this in your own projects. I'm going to uh, create a GitHub repository for this. So you can uh, just download the script from that. I will leave a link to the GitHub uh, repo in the description down below. So definitely check that out. And if you have any other ideas on uh, tutorials I should be making on this channel, please leave them in the comments below. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video and if you found it really helpful, make sure you leave a like. And if you are not subscribed to the channel yet, please subscribe. Uh, that will help me out a lot. And uh, thanks again for watching this video. And I'll see you next time. Stay safe. Take care. Bye.